We've all been there. We get a new, fun, and exciting cut because we are just so desperate for a change. Honey, do you think I should get bangs? And then live to regret it. Honey, what have I done? You told me to get bangs. What did I do? Raise your hand in the comments if you, like me, have placed wrongful blame on your spouse for a haircut decision you made. I'm sorry, babe. Getting a haircut can be a big change and often a change we don't think about enough because it's just hair. It'll grow back if you don't like it. But if you have ever hated your haircut, you know it doesn't just grow back fast enough and our hair can play a major <sighs> role in our confidence. So it's important to know what to expect when wanting to change your hair. And I'm going over the three most regretful haircuts I've seen in my 16 years of being a hairstylist, how to know if you really want them and what to expect once you have them. Let's go. Let's start out with what I call the most regrettable cut. I got bangs. Getting bangs. In my 16 years, I can't count how many times coworkers and clients have cut bangs and live to regret them. Now, don't get me wrong, bangs can be great. They can instantly make the hair appear thicker. They can accentuate facial features by bringing out the eyes and cheekbones. They work great on a multitude of face shapes. A-frame bangs I love for square and oval face shapes. A side swept bang is always great for a round face. And a full bang I feel like can look great on a lot of different face shapes, but there's always a but. Bangs can actually be very high maintenance and often require day-to-day -day styling or retraining our hair. So I'm gonna give just a little bit of insight and expectation for getting bangs. If you have a cowlick, you need to make sure when they are cut, your stylist is aware of this as they need to be cut a little different and they might need to be thicker to help give enough weight to weigh that cowlick down. If you have a severe cowlick, it's best to style them with the hair completely wet, pushing them side to side and then using your brush to shape them. You can also use a blow dry brush as well to shape if that's what's easier for you. Bangs are going to require daily styling. You wanna work out, they're gonna get sweaty, flat, or frizzy. Reshaping required. You wanna throw your hair back into a cute pony post shampoo day three, gonna need reshaping. While you will have to put in effort daily regardless of hair type, they are also going to require a trim every four to five weeks if you want them to stay in your favorite length. If you're on the fence about getting bangs, you can do one or two things. Have them cut longer at first as a trial run. That way you can see how you like them and if you hate them, you already have some extra length to start that grow out process. Or you can order clip and bangs like the ones I wore for demonstration in this video. Clip and bangs are the safest way to test out if you think bangs are right for you. I'll link some options in the description. You won't get the daily styling feel, but you do get to see a visual idea of how they look on you and if you like them before taking the full plunge. Before moving into the next haircut, I wanted to share with you two of my friends' channels, Justin and Gabby. They both have amazing videos on what haircuts are best for certain hair types and face shapes, as well as hair mistakes and how to avoid them. And I am so excited because in a few weeks, I'm going to be meeting them in person for a collab and we are all just so excited. So be sure, go check them out if you haven't already and let me know in the comments if you're as excited for the collab as I am. Next haircut regret is often getting too many layers. If you are someone who likes wearing their hair very sleek with having more weight in your hair, especially along your face, or you're one who likes being able to pull all their hair up or into braids, too many layers are likely something you might live to regret. Layers can be great. They add more movement through the hair. They can help even out your face shape and even help with getting more volume in the hair. The downside with layers is that while they can do all those things, they also can make your hair look thinner and prove to require more styling effort. Really knowing what type of hair you have is something that will help you know for whether or not layers are right for you. I don't know why you say our hair can't have this haircut. Look how good I look. That's cause it's a wig, Summer. I think you don't know what you're talking about, Summer. If you fall into the finer, thinner hair category, you may find that adding too many layers will take away from your natural thickness that you have in your hair. I wanna show you some comparison pictures here. As you can see, both of these women have beautiful, thick hair and are able to get lots of movement with their layers, but also their hair still remains full. The key word being here that they have thick hair. 
Now I wanna show you two other photos with lots of layers but in thinner hair. See the difference? Not quite the same. While all four cuts have similar versions of layers, the two fine thinner hair photos don't have quite the same appeal to them. While these ladies can get more volume in their top layer, they also are losing the fullness that they had through the rest of their length. If you have super thick hair, you certainly have more room to play around with your layers, but longer layers might be more ideal if you like a softer look. You will still be able to have movement, but it will be a more traditional look and easier to style as shorter layers can require a lot of heat styling to create the bend that you might want to see through your ends like those pictures. Interior layers are a great option though for finer, thin hair types, but they're also great for thick hair too if you're on the fence about layers. Interior layers are strategically placed below the top layer of your hair and are meant to be hidden, so to speak, but it will help add movement, texture, and shape to the cut without the commitment visually, and they're much easier to live with if you regret it. I have a haircut tutorial that I'll link below that I do this on a bob style haircut, but the same idea can be done for longer lengths of hair as well. Before we get to our final cut, be sure to let me know in the comments your most regretful haircut and why, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. You guys engaging in that way really helps for me to grow the channel, and I wanna be able to connect with you guys. And if you haven't, make sure you hit the bell to be notified every time I upload so you never miss a video. The final cut we'll be talking about today is the Bob Lob style cut. Now. I'm a little biased because I love a good bob and lob. I always loved mine, so I don't know why anyone would live to regret the decision of getting one, but people do. I think part of getting a bob or lob and loving it is committing to getting the right length cut, or should we say in this case, removed. I'm gonna get a little technical here. A haircut is not a lob if it is past or even hitting that shoulder mark where it's going to just flip out. A lob should be resting just slightly off the shoulders in the back with a minimal angle going towards the front. You wanna see a very slight bevel in the back. The bevel and roundness is part of what makes a bob a bob, so a lob should mimic that. It's just a little longer. Anything longer than that recommended length though is just a mid-length haircut, which is great, but it's not a lob. By all means though, wear it however you envision the bob or lob, you're the one rocking it, so it all comes down to your own personal feelings. I'm just giving my personal opinion here on my channel. I think people often regret a bob because you might think it'll be easier to style, which yes, technically there is less hair to work with, but oftentimes a shorter cut like a bob will often need reshaping daily or every other day. When my hair was in a bob, if I wanted my hair down and straight, it required a brush and blow dryer to reshape it every single day. Did it take me a lot of time? No, but it was still a daily requirement. Your natural hair texture and density play a big role in how much reshaping you may or may not need. So just keep that in mind if you are thinking of getting a bob. I think really thick, curly, frizzy hair types live to regret this cut at times because the extra blow dry and iron work to keep it looking sleek and smooth is gonna be more than if it's longer. I certainly love the look though of a natural wave and curl in a bob, but if you prefer that straight look, you will have to work at it a little bit more during the week to keep it looking that way. Also super thick hair, you might need to be thinned out for the bob to really lay the right way. It's fine if you're gonna keep up with the look, but when you do go to grow it out, it might be a little pain in the butt growing it back out. Any of these haircut changes can be great for so many different types of hair. With a haircut change, it just really comes down to knowing what your hair type is and understanding how much hair you do or don't have and maybe being willing to change your styling routine. And if you're on the fence, just do what I do. Buy some wigs on Amazon. You can find so many cheap wigs that will give you the option to see how a new haircut might look on you and you can get different colors too than your own if you wanna play around with it and have some fun. And there's no commitment. I will link some wigs below in the description. I hope you all enjoyed today and I will leave you with these other videos to check out right here. See you guys on the next one.